what's a good place to take a girl out on a, on a date? Somewhere that the girl wants to eat. I don't care, I don't care if I don't like it. I'm still gonna bring her there. Boy, you better tell the truth. Take a girl where she like to go. It don't matter if you like it. That's, boy, you, you brilliant. Okay, let me ask you something else. What's the best way to keep a girl happy? It's to, um, it's to always keep her, it's to always give her love and, um, and make sure she's good and never, and never, and never, and never, um, and never try to make her look bad. Always make her look beautiful. Boy, you a good little dude, man. I like the way you think. First of all, what's a... Yo, yo. What's up, my high-value bros? What's up, kings? What's up, gods? What's up, stars? Hey, man, so I'm out here, you know what I'm saying, getting some fresh air out here in nature. You know what I'm saying? Um, go ahead and hit that like button. And go ahead and smash that no notification bell, you feel me? But anyway, hey, guys, you seen the video at the top, right, with Steve Harvey. And basically, that leads into today's video. And, and it's about, you know feminism or the, the 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 women's liberation movement that type of thing you know what i'm saying but um all men <laughs> you know what i'm saying are raised to be simps you 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 feel me especially if you was born after the early 1960s so basically if you are if you are a uh, the child of a baby boomer which is generation x generation x is roughly from like 1965 to 1980 you see what i'm saying this is when uh, we we pretty much got indoctrinated with uh feminism which isn't bad in and in and of itself it's not a bad thing uh actually uh women deserve this the, the liberation that they have actually it, it began i think in like 1848 or uh 1868 i'm not sure of the date but i think it's 1848 with elizabeth stanton right and basically with the liber with the liberation of women or the first wave of feminism that's when it first started in that year with elizabeth stanton and their focus was mainly about being enfranchised. You see what I'm saying? Or having the right of suffrage, suffrage, which is the right to vote and, you know, to participate in elections and things like that. And so, you know, you know, America is pretty much like a, a patriotic, not patriotic, but a patrilineal. They have a patrilineal mindset. You see what I'm saying? Um, you know, women in the 1800s didn't have a lot of the liberties that they have today. You know what I mean? And uh, they deserve uh, the, the the liberty that they have uh, today, but it, it, it's to a point where today it's pretty toxic. You know what I'm saying? There, and what I mean by toxic is is that heterosexuality or masculinity today in 2020, you see what I'm saying, is basically um, it's waning. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not the norm. You know, being masculine. Uh, being um on your purpose being dominant and just owning your right to be a masculine man is becoming obsolete you see what i'm saying because now you have lgbtq uh you know and pedophilism and all this stuff right here is really becoming pervasive and prevalent you know what i'm saying in our society this is what they're really shooting for this is the way that we're going transgenderism and things like that you see what i'm saying so um the reason why I posted that video with Steve Harvey is to show you how we are being indoctrinated as kids. So with that said, you know, with Generation X, my generation, then you got the Y after that, and then with who are the millennials, then you got Generation Z. We're all being, you know what I'm saying, indoctrinated with this bullshit. And what is the bullshit? The bullshit you see on TV, the bullshit you see in the fucking movies, the bullshit you hear in music, the bullshit you see in magazines, the bullshit you see in society, right? Which is the norm, because we're being socially conditioned and socially programmed to accept these norms. You see what I'm saying? Now, Steve Harvey, everybody knows he wrote a book, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, or some shit like that, right? And the book did very well, but the book was very damaging to heterosexual men. The book was very damaging to um, masculinity. You see what I'm saying? Um, I didn't read the motherfucker. I just don't see Steve Harvey as some, uh, you know, relationship guru and things like that. I mean, it's a learning process for us all. 
You know what I mean? But he's not a very masculine dude. He's been he's been what married three, four times and shit, which means he's been divorced three or four times and things like that. So, you know, like what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, look how he's indoctrinating this this little boy. He's got this little boy on his show. And he's he asked the little boy, you heard what the little boy said. The boy said, you know, it doesn't matter what you want to eat. Like, okay, so you see this girl, you invite her out, and you want to take her to dinner, right? And you ask the girl what she want to go eat. And it's all predicated, it's all predicated on what she likes. So in other words, you've already pedestalized this woman that you don't know nothing about, who may have, who may not have high interest in you. You see what I'm saying? But I teach you guys how to look for high interest, so I'm not really gonna go there. But you know that as a high value man, you only deal with high interest women, correct? So let's just assume that she has high interest in you, okay? Right, she's calling you back real quick, she's texting you back real quick, she's got googly eyes, you know what I'm saying? That kind of thing, right? She's very responsive, she's very cooperative, she makes date e she made the date easy, and she wants to come meet you out. But he's already indoctrinated this little kid to pedestalize this woman you know what I'm saying? To like, and deny yourself of where to go. But wait a minute, I'm inviting you out. I'm gonna pay for your dinner, but I can't eat what I wanna eat. I have to go where you wanna go. See, that's that bullshit. So now you pedestalize this woman above yourself. You're assigning her more value than you're assigning yourself. That's the problem. You see what I'm saying? That's where the feminism, that's where the liberation of, of, of feminism has gone awry. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, in 1848, yeah, you need all the suffrage and voting rights, yes. And the second wave that hit in the early 1960s, you know what I'm saying, with domestic violence and social issues and uh, being uh, free with your sexual expression and you know in, your right to be in the workplace, all that, I'm for all that. You see what I'm saying? Because think about it now, the Africans, okay? Now I'm talking about my ancestors, the, the ancient ancestors in Egypt, we had a matrilineal society, okay? A matrilineal society, okay? The Sphinx is actually a woman. You see what I'm saying? But when we when we got colonized, the Europeans came over and put the little uh, beard on the chin to make it look like it was a masculine person. You know what I'm saying? On the Sphinx. That's, you know, with the, uh, the, the, the man face on the lion. They put a beard on it to make it look, to make it look masculine, but that, the, the, uh, the Sphinx is actually a feminine woman on a lion's uh, body. You see what I'm saying? All of the pyramids are basically, um, you know, they're actually, all right, when you look at a woman in a bikini, right? And it looks like an upside down, what? Triangle or pyramid. So a pyramid is basically a womb. You see what I'm saying? It's like it's like a womb, a vagina, pretty much. You see what I'm saying? Because it houses energy. It's an energy center as well. Um, when you look at the unk piece, I already described the unk, okay? You got the, uh, the cross with the... Uh, the womb or the circle at the top. I don't even want to call it a cross, but you got a, you got the vaginal canal or the, um, you know, your penis that's erect, the shaft of the penis. Then you have the fallopian tubes and then you have the, the womb at the top. That's that symbol, the ump, it means life. So our African ancestors in ancient Egypt, we really revered women because to us, a black woman is God. You know what I'm saying? So with that said, women are gods right they're the creators and we're the progenitors of life as men as masculine men you see what i'm saying because right now women they're not performing parthenogenesis at this point right? shout out young pharaoh for they're, this divine in other teaching. words they're not um inseminated themselves with semen uh via their bartholin's glands they used to be able to do that but now that we're here you know what i'm saying we're here to get the job done you, you feel me as progenitors and, I, and also another role that we have is protection like like i say in my book the highest calling of a man is to protect a woman so she can walk the earth unharmed. That's the highest calling of a man. You see what I'm saying? And the lowest calling of a man is to ambush a woman and to force his way into her life. So what do I mean by that? You don't want to be jumping on a woman, no domestic violence, no, don't be putting your hands on her, don't be ambushing her. You see what I'm saying? Um, don't be forcing your way into her life, right? She don't want to deal with you, bounce, bro, spin off. You know what I'm saying? Um, make yourself better and keep it moving. You know what I mean? Always be self-actualizing, always becoming your best version. So that's that, but let's, let's um, digress back to the video. So the boy is denying himself on where to go to eat just to please and placate her. He already starting off on the wrong foot. And then uh, on another question, Harvey asked the boy, the boy was like, hey man, you know, 
Um, you just keep her happy, always respect her and love her and all these things, right? In other words, that's where you get the adage of happy wife, happy life. You see, that's that bullshit. But what about you? What about you, King? What about you, God? What about you? You know what I'm saying? What about you, star? Right? Remember, you're the star of your own movie. You out here self-actualizing. You out here becoming your best version and shit, right? You're on your mission, your purpose, right? You're leaving your footprint here in the universe, on this planet. you establish your legacy. You in the gym, you eating, right? You know, all the things that I talk about, right? So what about you? It ain't just happy wife, happy life. You see what I'm saying? Both of you contributing to the relationship. She has to meet you with her money, energy, uh, emotions, and time, right? You're getting a return on your investment. It's not just sex, okay? Sex is a privilege. Sex is a benefit that you both share with one another. Both of you guys are avail uh, valuable, and both of you guys are coming to the table with something to give. That's why two people come together. Not separate, but you coming together to, to give. You see what I'm saying? So both of you are supposed to contribute to the happiness of one another. But it's your responsibility to be happy for yourself. You see what I'm saying? So this poor boy is being indoctrinated with feminism, as you can see. You didn't see a father figure. Who was he? Who was sitting next to him? His mother. What was the father? What was the masculine? You didn't see it. Okay? When you look at the original family, the original family, you had who? Asar, Aset, and, Her and Heru. Right? Asar, Aset, and Heru. Okay? So you had a masculine, you had a feminine, and then you had the child. That's the first in trilogy, and that's how it's supposed to be. Guys, my, my bros out there, guys, you play a very important role in the mindset of men, teen boys, I mean teenagers, and young little boys. You see what I'm saying? So, again, this is not something that's against feminism uh, or the women's liberation. Like, they deserve all the things they have, but it's a problem when it becomes toxic to masculinity. Even when you go to school, right? When you go to public school, who's more dominant in the, in the public school system? Women. Who's indoctrinated? Who's educating our children? Women. You see what I'm saying? We don't have a lot of male teachers. We don't have a lot of uh, male mentors, teachers in our schools. Um, because of the, uh, the uh, construct of white supremacy and things like that, you know what I'm saying? And the crime bill and shit like that that's been exposed by Trump when he was talking to Biden, you know what I'm saying? In that circuit, in that second debate, he talked about the crime bill. So when you talk about, you know, systematic racism that was set into place, um, you know, a lot of our brothers got locked up, you know what I'm saying? In the late 1970s, in the early 1980s, when, it, when, the, when the crack um, pandemic hit a lot of our urban neighborhoods, but we know law enforcement and um, Cointel Pro and those drug programs and the FBI and shit, they infiltrated our neighborhoods and put that shit in our neighborhoods. And now you got this whole crack epidemic, right? And then you had the quote unquote war on drugs with Nancy Reagan and Ronald Reagan and all that. And so they just locked motherfuckers up, right? Same thing with weed possession, all this kind of shit. You got a lot of niggas being locked up. And then you had the whole thing about, you know, um, you know, a man can't be in a home and they're giving our women, you know, uh, money and shit. You know what I'm saying? For like uh, public assistance and all this other kind of shit. You know, these are all machinations and, and tools they put in place to get rid of the masculine out of the home. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm talking specifically right now to to my, um, my, my, my black people, you know what I'm saying, that's watching the video. Now, my other demographic of people is cool, but I want you to understand how uh, masculinity has been compromised since the influx of feminism, especially the second wave in the early 1960s. So again, if you're, a, if you're a generation X, if you're generation Y, and you're generation Z watching my video, you have been affected. Now, if you're a baby boomer, they're not too much affected by that, okay? Because think about it. When you look at movies, right? If you look at the old movies, the old black and white movies, you know what I'm saying, um, that existed, like in the 1970s, movies from the 1960s, movies, uh, movies from the 1950s. It's a big difference in how you see how a man interacts with a woman. Men were a lot more masculine back then. Women were a lot more feminine. You see what I'm saying? You had that masculine and feminine polarity. Masculine energy is about dominance. It's about getting shit done. It's about being on your purpose. It's all about conquer, 
conquering and domineering and shit like that. Feminine energy is nurturing. Feminine energy is 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 uh, caring. Uh, feminine energy is about is about bonding and creating relationships and families and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? So when you see movies from back in the day, you can see it uh, in the culture of the movie. You see what I'm saying? So, but when you look at movies today, man, it's all over the fucking place, right? Right? You see what I'm saying? So, with all that said, <clears throat> including things like the gay manifesto that was brought out, and then you got the LGBTQ and the P and all this other kind of shit and transgenderism and blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? whoop dee -woo. Look where we are today. And this is why a lot of the relationships are failing. So, you know, I, I take my work very seriously about being a high value man and being successful with women, but I'm also all about, you know, contributing back to the masculinity of our men out here. Whether you black, white, whatever, you know, I don't I don't give a fuck. All masculinity is the same. All femininity is the same. And the, the, the perfect pairing of the two happens when you have that polarity. You see what I'm saying? And it's a beautiful thing. So I don't want to make this video too long, but I wanted to see, I want you guys to see how all men are born simps. Okay, so to become masculine, especially today, it, it's a learned behavior. This is why it's important to have fathers. This is why it's important to have mentors. This is why it's important to have uncles. This is why it's important to have role models and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? Now, I don't know my dad at all. At all. You know what I'm saying? The last time I seen a nigga was out. I was maybe seven years old or whatnot. You see what I'm saying? So I was raised pretty much by my mom. You know what I'm saying? But fortunately for me, you know what I'm saying? I had some some strong men in my family, like my Uncle Mac. You know what I'm saying? My Uncle Debo Marshall. You know what I'm saying? My Uncle Marshall Debo. I called a nigga Debo because he act just like Debo. The nigga done did about five or six bids in prison, right? You know what I'm saying? He out right now, whatever. And he living his life. I'm so happy for him. But the nigga just swole, swole. You know what I'm saying? Um, he about my height, 6'2", but he like 230, 240, just swole. He got the lazy eye like Debo. The nigga just, you know, the nigga act just like Debo from Friday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So imagine growing up with an uncle, a real life Uncle Debo. I grew up with niggas like that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, those are like one of my main two masculine figures coming up. And, you know, just watching movies. You know what I'm saying? I was, I grew up watching niggas like Jim Kelly and, and motherfucking uh, Fred Williamson and and um, the other nigga from Shaft, the first one. You see what I'm saying? I, I used to want to emulate them niggas. And, you know, John claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal, Schwarzenegger, Stallone. I grew up on all that shit as a teenager and stuff like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, those kind of uh, visuals, those kind of uh, uh, masculine guys, they, you know what I'm saying, persuaded me. They help form my, my mind. Even, you know, all the women I've been with in my life, they've all said the same thing. You know what I'm saying? That I'm very, uh, you know, they always call me macho or some shit like that. So I've always been like a, a really, you know, like masculine dude. But I, I've simped out too, guys. That's why I'm able to tell you about all this shit. I have simped the fuck out. I used to be a fucking simp. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not on a high degree, but all of us have simped at some, at, at some degree, right? You know what I mean? So... You know, shit, nigga. I, I put it. I put it in my book. You can read the chapter in my book where I talked about how to get an ex back, and um, you'll see why I confess a little bit on some of the simp shit that I've done. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not above none of you guys, bro. You know, this is this this is um um self actualization, learning from your mistakes, learning from the past. You know what I mean? We all have room to grow. I got room to grow now. We all have room to grow. This, this is what this shit is about. It's a lifestyle, guys. You know what I'm saying? Becoming your best version. So that's all I got for now, man. I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to see you guys next video. Guys, go ahead and grab that High Value Man t-shirt. Go ahead and get that. You know what I'm saying? It's in a, um, a link down below. Um, Grab also the High Value Man book. It's available in ebook and paperback. Go ahead and grab that. Guys, add me on Instagram, ace underscore heyru. Again, that's ace underscore heyru. Shoot me a DM for a, um, you know, a video topic. You know what I'm saying? We'll get it in like that. Now, also, fellas, if you're having a problem with a woman, you know what I'm saying? You need some consultation, man. Email me at ACIE333 at gmail.com. You know what I'm saying? I'll put it in a video, you know, and read it and critique it and give advice. You know what I'm saying? 
or you know what I'm saying, we can get it one-on-one -on -one with a consultation uh, via video, Skype, some shit like that, FaceTime, whatever, you know, we'll get it popping like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, hey guys, like, share, subscribe, man, like my shit, share my shit, subscribe to my shit, smash that notification bell, you feel me? And if you find this video of value, bro, you know what I'm saying? I added something to your life, man. Shoot me a donation, man. A dollar here, five dollars, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and drop it on my cash app. You know what I'm saying? And hey, man, we'll just spread the love. It helps the channel grow. Man, I'm out here. I'm gone. Love. Peace.